Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to review the HDL Tech XJB 75mm brushless quadcopter. Inside the package we're getting the manual which I'm going to tell you something about it pretty soon. We're getting one 3 cell 550mAh battery, it's rated as 35C. Some screws, USB adapter and the quadcopter. Now let me tell you something about this quadcopter. Normally I don't read the user manuals so I just thought it's gonna be easy to configure, I bind it, I thought everything is gonna be okay. It's not the case with this quadcopter. So if you bought this quadcopter you should watch the video and let me tell you how it works. First of all you do need to read the instructions because this quadcopter the direction of the board was not set right. So first you have to go to better flight and you have to put the direction on the rotation of the quadcopter to minus 45 degrees. Second of all, the motor worked all in one direction. So you have to use the Bill Heli suit and you'll have to reverse motors one and motors four. And last thing you need to do is to calibrate the ESCs through Betaflight. After you do all of that, you'll be able to fly this quadcopter. Otherwise, it's gonna be very painful. I cut myself from the carbon fiber and I struggle with it. So this was my bad experience with the quadcopter. One more thing, I already took it to a, for a test flight and I discovered that one screw was missing so in the following video you're going, you're going to see you're going to see some jello so make sure when you get in this quadcopter that all the screws are tight and some of them weren't tight so one was missing and the other one were loose so make sure to go through all the screws and make sure they're tight and last thing don't try don't attempt to fly this quadcopter without these screws of the propellers Otherwise, the propellers are just going to fly off the quadcopter. So let's let me tell you a couple of things about this quadcopter. First of all, this is my first brushless quadcopter that supports three cells batteries. My Pico X supports two cells, and the Aurora 190 that I recently reviewed also support only up to 2S batteries. So this one supports 3S. Now when you fly it with 3S cells batteries, don't fly it indoors, it's gonna be way way too hard to control it, so fly it with 2 cells batteries indoors and I think it will be a little bit hard to control as, even with 2 cells batteries. The weight of the quadcopter without the battery is 68.2 grams and if we add the battery it's 114.3 grams. There is a little bit of resemblance between the Aurora 90 and the XJB 75. The weight is very similar, actually this one is lighter and provides way more thrust than the Aurora 90. Why? Because of these motors, these are 7500 kV motors and they run like crazy with these 3 cells batteries. However, there is no built-in OSD in this quadcopter, the Aurora 90 has it and I think it's a big advantage. They are both, pro both antennas are protected with this protector. I think the XGB75 protects the antenna better than the Aurora 90. Besides that, I think that the build quality is pretty good, except the loose screws. The ESC controller is a 4-in-1 20 ampere controller. It supports up to 4S batteries. I'm not sure if it's advisable to use 4S batteries with these motors. Now I read lots of complaints online about this quadcopter before I got it and I was pretty afraid but actually it did fly pretty well. I'm not sure if the one you're going to get will fly similar to this one so I just want to give you a heads up that I read many complaints about this quadcopter. By the way this camera is uh, similar to the TX-03 camera and uh, 
In order to configure it, you will have to use the LED display here, which will be a little bit hard to read, but I think it's something that you should configure just once. So this is not the end of the world. It's configurable between 25, 50 and 200 milliwatts. It's in the same camera as the TX03 I've already reviewed. There is a LED indicator on the back, uh, which is okay, but the buzzer is extremely low and I think this buzzer is a little bit defective or it's just slow. I'm not sure, but it's not loud enough. However, we do get telemetry with this receiver, which is a good thing. This is, by the way, the FR Sky version. You know, to bind it, you will have to put your Tyrannis on D8, hold this button here, then connect the battery. In order to, for, to get to work, you will have to go to Betaflight and configure the UI tree uh, RX, as it says here. So this is not a user-friendly manual. I think AGL Tech should have done a much better job with this user manual. They should learn from Ishin. Lately, they released a couple of good user manuals, but if you did buy the quadcopter, I think you should listen to these tips and I hope these advices were useful for you. Coming next is the test flight. I'm sorry it was a little bit shaky. It can still provide you with a good example of what this quadcopter is capable of. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and see you on my next videos. Goodbye.